what's up y'all i'm going to show you how you can create your own grand theft auto art style starting with an image like this and turning it to something like this to do that we're going to use a few different tools and i'm going to show you every step of the way how you go about doing this so follow along make sure you like and subscribe for more content so diving into diffusion b i have a prompt that you can use for your own piece of artwork although it's going to vary honestly and you know this is not a guarantee your art's going to look exactly like mine but it will give you, give you a very good starting point. So I'm gonna have these prompts in the comments uh, or in the info below, so you can just copy and paste. And the most important part, uh, just kind of play around with the different models because you get different results. And some of the models that are available, again, aren't necessarily, uh, they'll have some not safe for work content, let's just say that, right? Uh, but depending on the prompt you use, you can really get some really cool results. Here are a few more examples uh, from some images that I played around with. So again, all from the same image, just slightly modified prompts, uh, slightly different seed number um, and the scale and your input strength of your image are going to really change how the overall image is going to look. So I'm, I'm going to use this John Jonathan Majors image and uh, I'm going to make sure in my uh, negative um, prompts here, the things I don't want to see, I'm going to say not safe for work. Oh, I'm like, um, yeah, I and mean, you can, you can add a lot more things that you, that you don't want to see there. Right. Uh, but you'll have to play around with this because it's not one straightforward way of getting these things. So I'm going to have a small batch. I'm just going to keep it like to three. And honestly, the results vary. So the more of the original image you want it to look like, you're going to have to slide the input strength to the right. And the more you want the AI to kind of play around and do its own thing, you're going to move the input slider to the left. I'm hoping in future releases that this is a little clearer because you can't tell what number it's on. It's kind of a guessing game, which is a big complaint that people had. And if you're brand new to, again, to using Diffusion B, uh, check out the Discord because a lot of times the, most of the questions you have have been asked a thousand times and the answers are there for you. Um, and people just keep asking the same thing over and over and over. Uh, with the current version that's out now, you can't use uh, safe tensors or anything like that. Like the CPK files are pr primarily what you can use in Diffusion B currently. Again, um, it's based off of stable diffusion. Um, so the models that you're using, I believe 1.5 or below should work okay. Uh, the 2.1 or whatever the most current one is, I don't believe uh, it will function as it stands. And I know there's a lot of models that are blended with other things that might prevent it from working as well. So you just kind of have to play around with the different models. So again, so my input strength, I'm going to keep around here. Again, I can't see the numbers, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but whatever. So I'm going to keep it just slightly above 40 because I want it to look like the original image too far. It's going to not really do what I want it to do. Um, I'm going to keep the batch count to one steps, honestly, cranking it up all the way to like 75 isn't going to do, do too much for you. So, I mean, anywhere from 25 to like 50 would probably be like a good way to, good place to start. I'm going to move this to like 30. Um, guiding scale, again, you can't see the exact number, uh, but as it says here, how closely to follow your prompt, lower numbers, give the AI more creativity. So moving the slider further to the right. We'll make sure the AI follows exactly what you're saying and moving it to the left, it gives it more flexibility. So I'm going to keep it somewhere between this 10 and 15 here. You just kind of have to play around the sliders. And again, hopefully they update it so you can actually see numbers because this is like a pain to try to guess. I'm going to choose my model and I have my negative prompts enabled and I'm just going to hit generate. So as long as you don't have a ton of things going on in the background, uh, this should generate relatively quickly. Um, and so the next step after this is generated, we'll take our images into, uh, a Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, there's a free like version of Photoshop called photo P, which is web based. And it's pretty much a one-to-one -one copy of Photoshop without having to subscribe or pay for whatever. Uh, it's just available online for free. It's a web browser application. Uh, because I am running a few different things, this might take a little second. So with the magic of editing, I'll come back once this is all done. Not quite getting the likeness. It, get, it got some parts, but I mean, it made them topless in here for some reason. Um, 
So yeah, let's go back in and I'm gonna move the slider over a little further. I'm also gonna change my model around at the photo one. Um, but yeah, depending on the model that you have, you'll need specific words to kind of have that model kind of activate, if you will. Just in my slider, so it's a little bit more like the image. And I'm gonna also tell it to follow the prompt a little bit more. So let's hit generate again and see what this does. Okay, so it's all done loading here. The problem with this model, the Grand Theft Auto one itself, it tends to make it look like the main character a little bit. So the likeness doesn't quite look like Jonathan uh, Majors here. Uh, it got the overall pose cool but the face is not quite what I want to be so let's try a few different models and see what happens so using the dreamlike diffusion model uh, it looks a little closer to the style I want um, the, although again the face isn't quite spot on so we're gonna have to go back to our settings and the guidance scales fine but we're gonna have to move the slider over a little bit farther to the right and I'm gonna see for one if it looks any different using a different model. Okay, now we have a few different options to kind of pick from. I generated quite a few different ones and different styles using different uh, weights with the image, how much it influences it, uh, slightly changing up some of the prompt itself. Um, but yeah, I got a good variety here to pick from and you know, with your own images, take your time, find which one works for you. I'm just gonna download one right here, say save image. So I'm gonna save this to my desktop. Again, like I said, I'm gonna copy this prompt. Uh, well, I'll come back to that in a second here and I'll have it in the uh, description. But I'm happy with that image, so I'm gonna close this out. So there's two things I'm gonna do before I will do the final step here. Uh, one, I'm gonna try to fix the face a little bit. So I've mentioned this website uh, a few different times, but there's a few different ways you can go about doing this. Uh, this one's just the easiest one I found. If you go to uh, arc.tencent.com uh, you can restore faces uh, you can remove backgrounds from images and you can also restore faces from the cartoon characters so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to choose the image I just made so uploading it to here it sharpened it up a little bit it didn't clean it up as much as I'd like so I might have to do that uh, in photo P uh, but yeah, it made it a little bit cleaner so I'm going to download this image now I'm going to photop.com Again, this is a browser-based editor. It's like a one-to-one -one copy of Photoshop almost. Uh, we're just gonna make a new project. Uh, you can determine the file size that you want it to be from here. I want it to be at least uh, 300 DPI. Okay, so I have my image uh, imported here. And again, like Photoshop, it has a bunch of options um, that you would find there. So uh, you have your selection tools, uh, like your lasso tools, so I can select around the eye if I wanted to. Um, it has the same kind of shortcuts, so uh, pressing Command J or uh, Windows little logo there and J and PC, I believe it is. Uh, you can do the same things. So I'm gonna duplicate that eye over and say edit and then transform. I forget the shortcut for this and horizontal. I zoom in a bit. Now I have my duplicated eye. I can move over just like you would in Photoshop. Um, and I can make a mask for this. And then, say, again, same shortcuts. Pressing B brings up the brush tool. And then with the black selected, I can kind of paint away. I'm going to make this um, brush a little softer. So I'm going to go with their default soft brush here. Just kind of blend that in a little better, right? So it doesn't get rid of the eyebrow all the way there. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit. So before and after looks a little better there, right? And you can take your time with it, fixing up the face, uh, but I'm gonna leave that as is for now. I'm gonna I can copy the background, merge that all down. Just doing like the regular shortcuts you would in Photoshop. So. Um, this is not a very long video. I'm gonna import a uh, image I found for the Grand Theft Auto logo. Uh, I'll probably have the downloadable version for you as well if you want to kind of use this in your own uh, work here. So I'm going to Command J. I'm going to drag this over into this file. Zoom out a bit again. Watch the transform tools. Again, it's like just like Photoshop. It's free. It's available online. Uh, may not be as fast as Photoshop is. Um, it's you know, web-based, whatever, but works for me. So I'm gonna zoom in, and then I'm gonna select 
uh, the color range here. And I'm happy with that. Okay. And I'm gonna mask out this. Actually, I'm gonna invert that. So let's uh, let's undo this. Um, what would be the easiest way to go about doing this? Because there's so many different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop, right? <laughs> I'm gonna say select. Uh, no, we're gonna use the magic wand tool. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna select the outside of this and then mask it. And then I can invert that, pressing Command I. And kind of place it roughly where you want it to be. Uh, I want this to be a little larger. Scale that up a bit. And then using that same mask, happy with that area roughly, right? With the same mask still selected, I'm gonna bring up my brush tool by pressing B. And then with black selected, uh, I'm gonna choose a hard brush for this. I'm gonna kind of just paint away the lettering where I don't want it to show. And because it's a mask, we can hide and bring stuff back. Uh, just using black and white uh, as our foreground and background colors. You kind of get the gist of it, but yeah, that's a quick way to kind of make a Grand Theft Auto kind of style poster. So this is with a cartoonized Jonathan Majors. And the first one I had was a Jason Momoa, but again, I'll have the Grand Theft Auto kind of thing in the background uh, downloadable. And uh, yeah, play around with Diffusion B. Again, it's not a, um, it's not a bot server like, um, Mid journey and thing like that, so you don't press like you know backslash imagine whatever. Uh, it's an actual application you download uh, from the GitHub server, and you can install it locally on your computer and run it that way. And uh, there's a whole lot of different models you can download and play around with. So hopefully this was a little clear and pretty straightforward. Uh, but yeah, once you're all happy with this, you can save it as you would anything else like in Photoshop. So save as. Uh, you can export it as a Photoshop file. Uh, you can export it as a PNG, a JPEG, etc, etc. So I can say PNG, and you can play around with the, the height and all that good stuff. Now I have a custom uh, image saved on my computer. So that's how you can make a Grand Theft Auto style uh, piece of art using Diffusion B and Photo P, both free and available online. Alright you guys, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below what you'd like to see me cover next, and I will talk to you all soon.